Ready to get weird? My name is Amanda McKnight and I will be your host for this top 10 nerd list where we count down the top 10 supervillains with weird power restrictions. I mean, you have to cap villains somewhere, right? Especially the ones on god level mode. Those ones need some restrictions. I actually love when I have an amazing villain who seems like they can do it all, but then you find out about something that is holding them back. That is what makes supervillains and really any character feel realistic. Though in this list, we're going to be taking a look at less of the ones that are poetic weaknesses or relatable and more of the ones that are just plain odd. And if you love supervillains as much as I do, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. All right, here we go. Number 10, Brainiac. One of Superman's greatest villains, brilliant, advanced with supreme technology, able to shrink any city, occasionally hinted at as being the destroyer of Superman's homeworld, Krypton, but he can never leave his ship. In his own comic series titled Brainiac, Superman knocks Brainiac out of his ship during a fight and defeats him simply by exposing him to bacteria, which apparently his immune system is not built to handle. In fact, it is made clear that Brainiac is only safe when on his skull ship. So yes, in this storyline, Brainiac is still super powerful as long as he can stay on a ship. Number 9, Serpent. Also known as called Borson, brother to Odin and uncle to Thor. This is a supervillain who actually killed Thor in the Fear Itself series. He is strong, has magic, can heal, and is able to gain power from fear. That is to say, those who fear him feed his power. However, this works both ways. In other words, if his opponent does not fear him, or if he feels fear, it weakens him to the point that he appears frail, aged, and becomes weak. All I can think of is the fear demon from Buffy when I see Serpent. Not sure if you remember the episode with Gaknar, but now all I can imagine is a, like a tiny, weak serpent who could easily be squashed when no one believes in him. Fortunately for Serpent, people often fear him, and so he is only in his weak state very rarely, which is good for him because he looks looks pretty useless when he is not feeling that fear. Number 8, Venom. So Venom, aka Eddie Brock, has a lot of interesting weaknesses. Fire, loud noises bother them, the symbiote can't survive without a host, but let's talk a little bit more around the restriction of needing a host. This is explained in the comics by Venom's constant need to feed on phenylethamine. What does this mean? That Eddie Brock is forced to constantly snack on chocolate to keep himself bonded to the symbiote. That's right. Chocolate. Okay, so phenylethamine is actually found in the brain, hence why Venom originally threatened and attempted to eat brains and actually drains this chemical from his host. Meaning that in order to keep the symbiote happy and fed, Eddie needs to build up his stores. And phenylethamine is also found in chocolate. Well, this has not been mentioned for a while in the comics, the newest Venom film starring Tom Hardy still made a nod at this backstory. Number seven, Reverse Flash. Also known as Eobard Thwain, Reverse Flash is known as one of the fastest characters in the DC universe. He is a constant rival to the Flash and has been a known supervillain in the comics since the 1960s. As terrifying a villain as he is, however, Thawne has his own strange limitations. If you are familiar with the villain, you can probably guess where these come from. Yep. Time travel. In the Flashpoint storyline, it is made clear that because his history is connected to Barry Allen's, he cannot actually kill his nemesis. After all, it was Allen's suit that he found in the future, so without Allen, Thawn would not be Reverse Flash. Instead, Reverse Flash just tries to make Barry's life miserable. Number six. Thanos. As OP as Thanos may have appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he definitely has had his setbacks in the comics. Namely, that he is a fool for love. More specifically, a fool for loving Mistress Death, or Lady Death, or just plain old Death as she is known in the comics. I also love that Death is a woman in Marvel. On more than one occasion, Thanos has sacrificed power for Death, and he would probably be ruling over the entire Marvel multiverse right now if not for his obsessive love for her. Not only has he made sacrifices, but he has also been tortured by his lover, even literally driven mad by her. Although it seems like Thanos may be over this love affair as of the end of Thanos Volume 2. And so a lifelong love affair just ends like that. Hmm. Number 5. 
Mr. Mixies Pitalik. Okay, so first I want to apologize for potentially butchering Mr. Mixie's name. Mr. Mixies Pitalik. Mr. Mixies Pitalik. It's a tongue twister for sure. Beyond that confusion, we have the astounding confusion that is Mr. Mixie's powers. That is to say, he is practically omnipotent and has the potential to be one of the strongest DC villains. Practically and potential being explained within his own odd limitations. Mr. Mixie likes to set rules for himself. A trickster in his own right, often if others can trick him into doing certain things, like spelling his name backwards, he will have to retreat or surrender. Odd. And yet, I gotta give it to him, he's probably one of the most fun characters despite this. Number 4. The Void The Void has a pretty weird one, because he is not just the Void. If you're a fan of the Sentry comics, you would know that the Void is also the Sentry. They are two sides of Robert Reynolds, the greatest hero that the world forgot. And they forgot him for a good reason. His alter ego is the Void, a crazy powerful supervillain who no hero could possibly stop, save for himself. Because the Void is actually contained within Robert, who is also the Sentry. In other words, the Void's limitations are that he is confined to Robert Reynolds' broken mind and is confined to a body that also contains his greatest weakness, because the Sentry is in there too. Moral of the story, mental illness can definitely make you feel like you are being held back. This comic book series is like an artistic representation of that. Number 3. Red Lanterns The antithesis to Green Lanterns, the Red Lanterns were created through the use of blood magic and are granted powers through channeling rage. Red Lanterns Lanterns are usually quite violent as a result of this. One's rage becomes unleashed, free, and unhinged when joining the Red Lanterns, turning its members into um, more animalistic versions of themselves. The more rage one feels, the less intelligent they become, sacrificing intelligence for raw, feral power. In fact, Red Lanterns prefer to attack people with their own hands rather than using their rings, which is somewhat odd. I mean, they may as well use that ring because they can never take it off. Yeah, that's right. What what limits a Red Lantern? Their own power source. When you accept a Red Lantern ring and put one on, your blood spoils from within and leaves you barfing up acid. Yeah, I don't know. So you actually can't take your ring off or you would die as you have no blood. In other words, you can join the Red Lanterns, but you can never leave. Number 2. Galactus Galactus's power meter is off the charts. Too bad he can never really use it though, because this sometimes supervillain has other priorities. He hungry! In fact, if it wasn't for his hunger, would we even call him a supervillain? Probably not. Galactus is just a being with too much power, and to feed this power, he's gotta keep eating worlds, which keeps him from really doing much else with his power. And his powers are pretty much limitless. Thanos has said before that Galactus is on the god level of powers. He's basically undefeatable. He's also telepathic, can create life, and transmute matter. In fact, his hunger problem has now been fixed, and he actually works more as a creator of planets and life known as the Lifebringer. Before this problem was solved, however, he destroyed many worlds as a result of his hunger. You know what they say, with great power comes great appetite. Number 1. Mephisto Basically, Mephisto is the devil of the Marvel Universe. He comes from a hellish dimension and gets people to submit to him, helping him complete dastardly plots in exchange for powers or favors. Often, he does not uphold his part of the bargain by finding loopholes within his packs or contracts. Tracks. However, he also has his own limitations. One thing that restricts him from being fully unstoppable is his powers are tied to his dimension. So he often has to find others to do his bidding as he can't be away from his dimension for too long. And he can't even get just anyone. He has to find someone who is willing to submit. Hence his tricksy packs he makes with people. If he could just go wherever and do whatever, the Marvel Universe would certainly be a more hellish place. Thanks for watching, Nerd Squad. Was there a supervillain that I missed that you would really love to see on here? Let me know in the comments below. I'm all for learning more about strange, strange restrictions. There are a few that we couldn't fit on here, so I'd also love to see if some of those unmentioned make it into your comments. And while you're down there, smash that subscribe button and turn on that bell so you are sure to stay in the know about all of our new nerdy lists. Till Next time, I'm Amanda McKnight, and this is Top 10 Nerd, reminding you to stay nerdy, YouTube.